my natural home medicine cabinet. Um, and the reason that I'm doing that is just because I know that when we're you know, trying to maybe transition to a more natural way of living, um, to herbal remedies and natural solutions to support our health, it can be a little bit easy to get overwhelmed um, with all of the different herbs and essential oils and natural remedies out there and think that we kind of have to stock up on everything to be prepared for whatever may come. But the truth is that you can tackle most common ailments with a few pretty standard um, natural products and, and herbs and things like that. And I wanted to just go over what we use on a regular basis during cold and flu season and all year round actually, just to kind of support our overall health, our immunity, um, and kind of everyday illnesses and ailments that come up. So these are kind of the main components of our natural medicine cabinet. And I say natural medicine cabinet loosely simply because I don't necessarily store all of these things in one cabinet. So I do have certain things that I store in my medicine cabinet and then certain things that I store in my pantry and kind of just in different areas of my house depending on their uses. So for example, things like garlic, um, you know, I would store in my kitchen because I cook with it, but then I'll also use it when I'm sick. So I'll quickly go over kind of what we use and how we use it. And then I will also, there's a, I've got a few blog posts and videos showing you how to make some of these things yourself. So I will make sure that I link to those below so that if you want to go and make some of your own herbal remedies, um, then you can do that as well. So first up is, well, first of all is honey. So just honey, straight up honey. I always have honey on hand. I buy local unpasteurized raw honey. Um, but more specifically, I actually infuse my honey or some of my honey, I'll take and I'll put in a jar like this and I infuse it with thyme. Now you can do any type of herbal infusion you want. Essentially, you can do lavender honey. You could do, I guess, rosemary honey or um, you know things like that. But thyme specifically, is an expectorant, which means it helps to get rid of mucus. And it's really good. My whole family, we just went through about uh, some kind of cold that my daughter brought home from school, and it was a really mucusy one, like my husband's still coughing it up. Um, you know, we're still kind of just getting over it, but I have been putting thyme honey in my, um, I put hot water with lemon, and then I'll, I'll put some thyme honey in there, and I've been drinking that in the morning, and that has really been helping to loosen it up. Um, so what I do, is I make sure that the thyme is really dry first. I know some people will use fresh thyme and put it in honey and infuse it that way, but there are some precautions with that. There are There's a slight risk of botulism that can occur from that because essentially you're taking uh, an ingredient that has a little bit of moisture in it, you're putting it in an anaerobic environment, environment with no oxygen, right? So honey will keep that out, and that can actually cause botulism spores to grow and become active. So um, just to be on the safe side, dry out your thyme completely. Once you've got a dry herb, right, your dried thyme, then I just pop that in a jar and then I just basically cover it with honey and let that sit. And then, you know, every couple days I might turn it, something like that. And then eventually I strain out the solids, the herbs, and then I just retain the honey and use the honey like that. So thyme honey, fire cider. This is like huge in our house. We use this all the time through cold and flu season. And I do actually have a video showing you how to make this. I will link to that below. The video will see fully how it's made, but it's um, essentially apple cider vinegar that's been infused with a whole bunch of healing herbs, um, garlic, onion, horseradish. Um, I put some turmeric in mine, ginger, some fresh herbs, rosemary and thyme I put in mine. Oh, and hot peppers as well. It is really good for sinus infections and for respiratory problems. And again, for kind of, you know, mucusy coughs and things like that, where you're trying to clear that mucus out and clear your sinuses. So fire cider, really um, big go-to herbal remedy for us during cold and flu season. Next thing you'll probably be familiar with is Elderberry syrup. So elderberries have uh, high immune boosting properties and we just actually bought a couple elderberry plants that we're going to be putting in in the spring. Um, I bought them in the fall because in the spring when I went to my garden store they were actually like it was impossible to find them. People snapped them up like that. So I got them in the fall uh, but I've done some research it looks like the best time to plant them is in the spring and they said yes they can sit in the pots till then so I'm going to do that and plant those in the spring. But of course, I'm not going to get a harvest till at least next fall. So I do want to make my own elderberry syrup because it is expensive to buy it in the bottle all the time. 
So the next best thing was to order some dried elderberries. So that's what I did. This is Star West Botanicals, which you can get direct from their website or through Amazon. Um, so I ordered this pack of um, dried elderberries, which I'm going to use to turn to make my own syrup. Essentially. But for right now, we needed something quick, so I just grabbed some from the store. Uh, next thing, I've just got some garlic and some ginger. Um, I always keep these two things on hand during cold or flu season, especially uh, because of their, you know, all of their immune boosting and antiviral properties and things like that. So garlic, what I'll actually do with garlic when I'm feeling like a scratch in my throat or sick, um, is I will take a clove and I'll actually just eat it raw or I will chop it up and mix it with a little bit of honey and take that spoonful and actually just eat that raw um, and it's you know it can be a little bit hard to a little bit unpalatable which is why chopping up and putting it in a spoonful of honey and taking it that way can be better um, usually I'll do a spoonful of that a day or one clove with some honey per day when I feel like I'm getting run down and coming down with something or when I'm sick ginger um, I will chop up fine and then I'll put it into my teapot and I will pour some hot water over it and make a ginger tea um, I might then squeeze in some fresh lemon and maybe add some honey and then you get your, yourself a fresh ginger, honey and lemon tea, which has so many health benefits, right? So ginger is a great one, not just for cold and flu, but also for um, nausea and stomach problems and things like that. Uh, this, these are dried orange slices and I actually keep these on hand because um, when I'm, you know, again, feeling run down or feeling sick, I will put these in um, I'll put them in a food processor first just to break them down and then I put the little bits into a coffee grinder and I'll grind them into a really fine powder and then I'll mix that up with some hot water again you know throw some um, honey in that kind of thing and I've essentially got myself a homemade vitamin C powder um, so the benefit to using these dried orange slices and doing it that way rather than just say drinking orange juice or eating an orange is that a lot of the nutrients and essential oils, right, vitamins and stuff are, are concentrated in the peels. So they're actually more nutrient dense than the pulp or the juice. So I like to dry the whole thing and then grind it all up and drink it that way. Um, and I do have a recipe for that on the blog as well. So I'll make sure to link to that below. Next thing is herbal salve. So salve, it's S-A-L-V-E salve but it's called a salve and it's essentially it's uh, beeswax with some mixed with oil and um i do mine with an infused oil so i make herbal infused oil so for example this one is a dandelion healing salve so i will infuse usually i just use like olive oil i'll infuse that with um, dandelions so that it takes out all of the you know healing properties from the dandelions and then uh, again, once that's infused for a few weeks and you strain out the dandelion flowers, then um, you've got your dandelion infused oil and you can mix that in with some beeswax and then let it set and you've got a healing salve that is really good for dry, cracked skin, wounds, um, you know, just moisturizing your hands over the winter months. It, you can use it as a lip balm, right? It's completely natural, so you can put it on your lips and not be worried. Um, but it's just really, really moisturizing, right? And so I will do, I do a few different herbal salves. One of my favorites is actually a cannabis salve. Um, we live in BC in Canada where it is now legal to grow your own cannabis, so we do. And I use that to make an infused oil, and then I um, use that with my beeswax, and I make a cannabis salve. And we did this, and we gave it away for Christmas presents last year, and people loved it. My husband, who works with his hands all the time, is always getting cuts and nicks and, you know, cracked skin and everything. Um, his, he was like, I've never seen something that could heal these, you know, skin problems as quickly as this cannabis salve. So we went through that really quickly. Um, we'll be making more this year for sure. So I'll make sure to uh, try to get that up on the blog as soon as possible. If you are in an area where you can grow it, um, obviously cannabis has so many healing properties. Okay, so the last thing, um, but that probably makes up the largest portion of my natural medicine cabinet are my essential oils. Now, this is just like a fraction of what I actually have. I think I counted like somewhere near 75 oils last I checked because we just use them all the time and I'm just like such a big fan. I'm such a big convert to the essential oil world. Um, but these are some of the ones that I use most, especially for sickness and healing and that kind of thing. So, um, 
I use plant therapy essential oils for many reasons. One of them simply being that they're they're really affordable, and I can get big bottles. Like this is a hundred milliliter bottle, and I think the lemon is like less than twenty dollars. But lemon is one that I always keep on hand. Of course, we know it um, as an additive in a lot of cleaning products because it's purifying and detoxifying. I like to diffuse it to kind of purify the air, especially when everybody's been sick and we're kind of trying to clear that out of the house, right? Support our immune system, everything. It's antibacterial, antifungal, um, antimicrobial, antiseptic, lots of, you know, high in vitamins and minerals, all that stuff. I don't tend to um, dilute it and put it on my skin. You can do that for absorption, um, but lemon also, there's, uh, you know, you want to be careful because if you go out in the sun with it, it can um, essentially burn your skin. And so I don't, I just don't even go there. I don't put it on my skin, but I do like to diffuse it and use it in a lot of my home cleaning products and that kind of thing. Um, lavender, couldn't, you know, you can never not touch on lavender because it's just so versatile. Of course, it's great for anxiety, depression, you know, stress, relaxation, that kind of thing. Um, insomnia, all that, but it's also great for um, any skin rashes or irritations, acne. I use lavender oil diluted um, with some frankincense on my skin every day. Um, so good for all those things, but it's also, um, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antiseptic, all those things as well. And it's also great for headaches and migraines um, and for asthma, if you've got somebody in your household that's dealing with asthma. Peppermint, another one that's great, headaches, nausea, kind of those are the main reasons I use this, but it's also great to diffuse if you're um, you know, having some respiratory issues, it can help clear some of that. Um, fur needle and cedarwood are other favorites of mine for respiratory issues. Um, they're really good for things like bronchitis and sinus infections and just general respiratory issues. And they're also kid safe, meaning they're safe to diffuse around children. So I use these a lot because we do have a three-year-old in our house. Um, and for her specifically, when she's dealing with something, actually almost out of this one, we've been using it so much, um, there's this blend called Sniffle Stopper. And so we've used that a lot lately and it does have fur needle, um, rosalina spruce, cypress, cedarwood, and spearmint, all kid safe oils um, that are safe for her to be breathing in. But that, I've been diffusing that a lot for her because she's been fighting this sickness as well. Um, frankincense, I touched on that quickly. I use it with my lavender, right? It's really great for um, healing skin. And also, where's my uh, frankincense? So heal skin, but also strengthens the immune system. So diffusing it again is just a really good idea during cold and flu season because you're going like to build up that immunity. Uh, ginger, another one that is fantastic for nausea. We touched on that when I um, talked about using fresh ginger, but ginger essential oil as well. If I'm like cramping, it's that time of the month, or I'm just nauseous, or if you've got morning sickness, you can dilute it in a carrier oil and you can actually just rub some on your belly and it's really, really helpful. Or again, you can diffuse it. Or I know some people, um, when they're dealing with morning sickness, they'll just open the bottle and smell it, right? And it can really help to bring that down. Um, tea tree, great one, antiseptic, antifungal. I've been using it actually on my daughter recently because she came down with a case of athlete's foot. I think it was from her running around in her um, rain boots at school and they were wet inside and so she developed this case of athlete's foot. So we've been treating it um, with tea tree diluted in a carrier oil and that's really been helping to heal that quickly. Like over the course of a couple days, it's almost gone now. Uh, eucalyptus, fantastic for respiratory issues. This one's not kid safe, so I don't use it on my daughter and I don't tend to diffuse it a lot, but what I'll do for myself and my husband is I will make her own vapor rub essentially. So I put it in um, coconut oil, a few drops in coconut oil, and then I'll just spread that on our chest or even my herbal salve. You can mix it, you can use this like a, a carrier oil. A couple drops in there and just put it on your chest and that'll help to open your um, your nasal passage and help with respiratory issues, clear your sinuses, all that. Eucalyptus is fantastic for that. Clove bud is another one. This one has a wide range of properties as well. It's a great one to diffuse. It's in a lot of kind of germ fighter blends like this one here, which I'll go over in just a sec. Um, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antiseptic, antiviral, like anti all the things that bring us down when we're sick. So clove bud, great one to have on hand. And then these last couple here, um, this one's called Germ Fighter. And so this is a blend or a synergy is what they call it. Uh, but this one has lemon, clove bud, eucalyptus, cinnamon, and rosemary. Um, so this is kind of just, you know, if you don't want to blend your own oil, I always keep some of this on hand. 
It smells just fantastic, especially at this time of year, all those kind of warm, spicy scents. But it's really, really good for boosting immunity and for helping you heal when you've come down with something. So this is like constantly going in the diffuser. Now this one doesn't say kids safe on it. I do diffuse it for the whole family. You know, never had any issues, about 10 drops in a diffuser I do. Um, but again, if I'm using something in my daughter's room, specifically for her, I have this kid safe version of Germ Fighter, which has all kid safe oils in it. So this one has spruce, marjoram, lavender, rosalina, and lemon. That's another thing I love about plant therapies. It tells you right on the bottle what's safe to use around children and what's not. Um, and they have extensive, you know, information on their website too on how to use each oil and what's safe and, and what's not. So um, check that out for sure. But that's kind of it. That's what, you know, our go-to. There's lots of other things that we do use from time to time, depending if it's a specific type of, you know, illness or something. Salt's another one that I use, right? That old folk remedy of gargling with salt, that can help dry up mucus and that kind of thing. So I do use that. Um, echinacea tincture. Uh, again, that's something that we're not growing yet, but I have the seeds <laughs> and we're going to be growing some next year. So I'll be making my own. Um, but I have bought, you know, echinacea, echinacea tincture from the health food store before. I don't have any on me now, but that's another one I like. Um, so that's, that's it though. So I will link to any of the articles or videos that I've put out already showing you how to make some of these things. So fire cider, my vitamin C powder, the dandelion, dandelion healing salve. I have one for that. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit like below and subscribe so you never miss an update from the house and homestead. Bye for now.